Hi guys, I'm back again for another video and this one is a really important one. Um, it kind of goes hand in hand with the whole twin flame thing um, and what we touched on in that, but more so it's about just idolatry and what that looks like, what that feels like most important and um, what, to, what to expect if God is pointing out idolatry in your life and asking you to lay it at the feet of the cross and um so i mentioned in my uh my previous video that that is something that i've had a lot of experience with recently this past year has been a very uh poignant year for cleansing of idols um cleansing my temple of idols cleansing my mind and my heart of idols and um it's there's there are some very distinguished steps that I just wanted to talk about so that you can work through those with the Lord. And if the Lord is pointing out an idol to you, you know what to expect in regards to what it's going to be like when you lay it down. Because it's not easy and it's not pretty. Um, and it, um, it just, it sucks to do, honestly. But the vacuum that it creates to lay that idol down because you know if you think about it this was something that was fulfilling or like taking up so much space in your soul and your life so when that thing leaves there's a vacuum there and the sucky thing is feeling that void <laughs> the amazing thing is what comes in to fill it because it's the love of christ and the intimacy and the faithfulness of christ you get to understand that on a much deeper level because um it just takes your intimacy to such heights and depths and, and breadths that you've never imagined and you've never experienced before in any relationship. And you get to do it with him and it's incredible. Um, so that vacuum that you feel between the time of when the idol falls and when Christ comes to fill it, because there is a space of time, a short space of time where all you feel is that void. And that and feeling that void is just in my experience has been just as important as the filling of that void by the Holy Spirit and by the love of Christ, because without feeling that void, you have no idea how great it you have no. Um, you have no point of reference, you have no point of relativity of how how incredibly different it feels than once Christ comes and fills it. So. Um, the, the crappiest part of the whole experience is actually the part that holds the greatest gift because you can't, ex you can't appreciate light without, without knowing darkness. You can't appreciate beauty without knowing, um, defilement, you know, it's, it's life and especially this journey, this, this. Christian walk is just, it's all about dichotomies and it really does take you to the opposite ends of many spectrums and um, there is beauty in that and there's a point to it and it's to allow you to appreciate the, the amazing, the wonderful, the astounding because you've experienced what's on the other end of that. So the first thing that you will notice when God points out of a uh, idol to you if you're anything like me is you will get very defensive of it um you'll be like no and you'll rationalize it and you'll excuse it and you know at first you're just like no and then you'll be like and this is why it's not an idol and blah 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 and this is why i need this thing or this person or whatever it is or this you know blah 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 and you're not lying to god you're lying to yourself and you're trying to like you know bullet point a list kind of to God, like, hey, did you see this list that I made? This is really important stuff. I think you should read it. I think you should read it again then, you know. Um, and then as time goes on and God keeps showing you the idol, um, you know the idol's there because God is also at the same time allowing the idol to get heavier and heavier and heavier. And the weight of that idol is being felt more in your life. And the the demands of that idol are being felt more in your life and so when he keeps bringing it up then it makes you mad you know <laughs> then you're like 
I can't live without this. I can't go without this. What am I going to do? You know, I, when I, when it was with me, I'm like, God, I'm going to get fat. How is that going to glorify your name? Like that doesn't, you know, like you're going to let Satan win and I'll look my best when I was at my worst. How does that, you know what I mean? And it's like, God's like, oh, okay, you think that's what, <laughs> you think that's what's going to bring me glory is how good you think you look. And no, 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 sweetie. That is not what's going to bring me glory. What's going to bring me glory is that your virtues are back. What's going to bring me glory is that your health is back and that your, your, your zeal for life is back and that you have energy and you have, you know, that you are able to manage stress because I'm giving you this incredible career that I plan to grow. And, um, you know, you can't do that when you're running on empty all the time, when your brain is running on nothing but like, you know, fats and vegetables and you are, I mean, I had zero ability to deal with stress when I was starving myself. Like my brain literally would just short circuit and I would just get really frustrated and really um, agitated very, very quickly because I had no ability to deal. Um, you know, and it's like the way I was looking at it was like because my idol was telling me the most important thing in the world is how you look and how much you weigh. That's really all that matters. That's all anybody else cares about. That's all you should care about. And God's like, that's not true. That's not truth at all. And even though you can't see the truth, I know the truth and I'm still asking you to, to just trust me enough to follow me. And so, but it was like very, it terrified me so much when he would show me the idols that um, it made me angry. So maybe nobody goes through that phase. And if you do, well, then good for you. But I did because <laughs> that was my default, like fear, anger, fear, anger right there. Like same. So um, not saying that that's a virtue, you know, we're working on it. We are working on it. But um, so that's another thing. But eventually the idol gets so heavy that you are begging God to take it. You are begging God to show you how to lay this down. And you're literally like, I was on my knees crying multiple times saying, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to, to, I don't have the, the courage or the strength or, you know, my fear is too great, but I have to lay this down because I can't live like this anymore. For both idols, that's how it was. Like, I can't live like this anymore. I can't have this thing taking up so much my, time in my mind and my life, so much energy. You know, it was just like, it, it just became all consuming. It always had been all consuming, but I was finally aware of it. And like, I was aware of every single time I was just focusing on that idol or I was doing something to serve that idol or I was, you know, sacrificing something else that God wanted me to do or that would have pleased him in order to serve this idol. It was ridiculous. And so finally, it was just a matter of like surrender. It's always just a matter of surrender. Like God will take it from there. As soon as you lay it down, God's like, ha! finally, let's go. Let's get this place cleaned up. And you're just like, <laughs> what are you going to do now? You know, it's just a mess. It's so amazing and so slobbery. It's just awful and wonderful at the same time. So, um, this, so once you lay the idol down, that's all well and good. You're like, okay, the hard part's done. And then you realize it's not. So what I experienced both times I laid down idols more like kicked them down or allowed God to topple them in his presence um, or allow, allowed his presence to topple them I should say I experienced that void and that void it is totally normal and it did happen for me there were there were moments where I was like what is the point of my life then like what is the purpose of living it was a totally normal experience. The Lord showed me that and he showed me that the reason why it's a totally normal experience is because when that was my foundation and my foundation drops, it's normal to question, where's my bottom? What do I live on? What do I, what do I stand on now? 
Um, and so although it was a very scary thing to think about, like, oh my gosh, is my life over? Is there a purpose to my life now? And like, this might sound really bad to say out loud, but it's also very necessary for other people to hear because when God comes for your idols, this will be a very normal thing that you will experience. And it doesn't last very long as long as you cry out to the Lord and just hit your knees again and say, God, I can't do this. I know that you are good. I know that you are kind. And I know whatever you have planned in the future for me and for my life is so much greater, but this void is killing me. It's crushing me. So just please fill me with your life. I am dying to myself, just like you asked me to in your word. Fill me with your life, your truth, your way and I will follow you. That's really the only choice you have at that point. You choose to die with your idol or you choose life with Christ. So just make sure that when you're in that moment, you call out and ask for the life. Um, then, you know, walking out with the Lord through that phase to walk through, you know, when you create a sin, you make a wake. You know, I think of it as a speedboat, like a wake boat. Um, and, you know, like a wakeboarding boat, it creates this gnarly wake that, you know, people do sweet tricks off of. And that is what I see my sin do. It's like, I'm just going and it's so fun when I'm in it. And then like, finally, when the boat stops and then there's all these waves and then I'm like, oh, okay, now, you know, now we gotta roll over all this wake. So that's how I imagine it. Um, and that's what it feels like. You still have to walk through your sin wake. So walking back out, backing out of that space that you were in and that life you were living for idols, that's a really delicate and difficult process. But it is a process that Jesus is there for you every step of the way. And by that time, when it's finally start to walk or like when it's finally time to start walking, that's when the love of Christ and the intimacy has exploded in your heart and you have the strength to at least follow him. You don't really know where you're going. You don't know what this path is gonna look like. You have no idea what the different twists and turns are gonna be, but you know you're not alone and you know he's got you in this. So um, lastly about idols is that they will come back. They will try to come back and when they do, just pray for the Lord to give you discernment. Pray throughout the process, God, give me wisdom, give me discernment, because they will come back. You will probably slip up one time or two times. But the thing is now that idol that used to be, you know, 18 feet tall is now two inches tall. I have, I don't know any reference. Like, is that an inch? What is that? But it's that tall. You know what I mean? It's it's not that big compared to what it was. The Lord has already done such a magnificent restoration in your life. Um, and it's not as big as it once was. And even though sometimes you might start to go back in that way, the Lord will correct you. So just pray for sensitivity to his Holy Spirit when he's speaking and making sure that you are quick to repent. Um, and I can't believe that that was <laughs> another part that I met, forgot to mention, but um, it's in the, the phase of when you're bawling and you're just a mess and you're begging for the Lord to take this idol and kill it. Um, it's repentance. I mean, it's true repentance. It's your heart has changed and you're no longer, you no longer want to do things the way you have before. You no longer want to serve the things you have before. Your heart has completely been changed. And um, in those moments when those idols rear their ugly heads again, you're going to see them differently. You might get tricked a little bit, but you're going to start. He's he's changed you, you know, and he's also been changing the spirit of your mind. You know, do not be conformed to the behaviors and the customs of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, then you will know what God's perfect will for your life is, which is which is pleasing to him and perfect for you. So um he will be there every step of the way you just have to the only thing that i i'm so grateful for idolatry because i wouldn't be as close to my the lord without having had to come out of it and that's the only reason why i'm grateful for it but um the intimacy i have with christ is so much greater now because he had to pick me up off the floor and teach you teach me 
what life was about and teach me who I was and teach me what, you know, why life was really worth living because the things I was living for before were just dumpster fires. Like it was just, it's like the really, that's what you're living for. Like, wow, how shallow and vapid and pathetic, you know, my existence was and how incredibly proud and oh my gosh self-important I thought I was when I was in the world and if that's where you are right now you know what you're in the right place because you're hearing from somebody who knows exactly what it feels like but um the purpose of life and what your life can really be is so much greater than the small, stupid, piddly lies that this world tries to feed you, feed you and tell you is the creme de la creme. Like it's absolutely not. It's like a dog returning to its own vomit, you know, when you can really go into a five star restaurant and be served by the greatest chef who has ever lived. That is the comparison of what you were living for in the world and what you will live for in Christ. So. I mean, you're going to go in the restaurant. I'm going to go in the restaurant. Everyone should go in the restaurant. And that's why we do these things. We tell everyone, go in the restaurant. Like, I know you're afraid of leaving your old life behind, but really, your old life was awful. I mean, I don't mean to be a wet blanket, but your old life was terrible. And this new one, like, no matter what he asks you to do, it's good. It's good. And it's going to be amazing. Eventually, it will be amazing. <laughs> it might not always be fun in the moment, but it always turns into amazing. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a comment in regards to any experience with idolatry you've had. I want to share that with you. I want to pray for you. And God, I just pray that you will use this video and set it in front of anyone who really needs to hear um the Holy Spirit speaking about idolatry because I know that this is a really huge problem that plagues not only your chosen people who have already been called out of the world, but the world. Like, this is the world's reality. This is most people's reality, God. And I just pray that you will use this video to bring light into the darkest places. I pray that you will illuminate um, different rooms in the temple of our in you know your temple with your holy spirit and i pray that you will um that deliverance will come through this video i pray that revelation and wisdom will come through this video and i pray that repentance oh lord sweet repentance thank you for the gift of repentance and the blood of christ i pray that repentance will come from this video so that the blood of christ can be applied to those places where he shows you repentance is needed so that healing can occur and your life can start there. So Holy Spirit, I just pray you flood these people, flood their hearts, flood their minds and fill every room of your holy temple within them. And I bless you all in Jesus name. And I'm so excited to see you again soon. Bye.